What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Heavyweight Nation podcast. And today we have a very special guest, probably my personal favorite. I'm sorry if that that offends anybody out there, but and and just the whole company, one of our close close friends, Braxton Amos from Wisconsin. We love our Wisconsin boys, man. I think it's just you know it's just a thing, man. It's just a thing with us and us in Wisconsin. So how you doing today, Brax? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. I, I think we were talking last night. I think trying to get the whole uh, the whole crew together on on one podcast would be that would, would be, be great. Uh, that would be uh, I think I don't know how good that would go over. I think there might be like a Austin Gomez DJ Hamity like mid conversation argument. Like I say, we try it sometime. I mean, we I, got. I'm so down for that. It sounds I'm down, awesome. I'm down. Why not? You know. Well, you know, we'll have to get you and DJ and Trent, and you'll have to. We'll have to all have y'all have to need some assistance to get in contact with everybody, and yeah. uh, we will get the whole whole Wisconsin roster in one Zoom call. Um, I don't know how that would go, but I think it would be fun. It yeah, be fun. yeah. I mean, I'm I'm down. You know, but like, I mean, what would we even talk about? <laughs> like, I can't ask every single person every single question. Like, I know, I don't know what we would talk about without getting canceled. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like we I mean, gotta have definitely. We could definitely get in. You know, we got some conspiracy theorists. We got some some uh, wild men. Some some. You know, we have comedians. We got we got tinfoil hat guys. We got we got a little <laughs> bit of everything on the team, which is you know awesome. But it's, yeah, it's and also, you got a Trent, and you got a Trent Hilger, and we have Thor Love and Thunder. Yeah, so, Thor Love and Thunder. Yeah, I mean, look. It, it, so chunky Thor is what we're referring referring to. No, no, he's not bro Thor. He's not bro Thor anymore. He's oh. he's getting back to skinny Thor now. Oh yeah, man. He you know he kept telling us while he while we were on um about these shakes he was drinking, oh, yeah. and then the he later then th- now then he later talked about concrete mixers in the diner across the street having a food challenge, and I was like, listen, man, I agree with all the people talking. Three shakes don't exist. You were eating two concrete mixers a day. And go to the diner across the street. No, dude, it, it's the amount of food and shakes and calories that guy had to put away. He said, he said right about 10,000 is, is insane. So I, a I lot of people got, don't think it's true. 10,000 calories a day. And like, so like I was overseas for like the tail end, like I was at the OTC and then overseas for like the tail, like the last month or so before preseason started. So like yeah, I had you, heard... were wrestling, you had randomly made a, a Greco world team. Yeah, you know, well, yeah. Little, little shout out to Brax there, Greco <laughs> world team. But like, so like I, I had, you know, been talking to the guys still and Trent was like, yeah, like I feel like shit. I was like, what are you, what are you talking about? Like, this is like this, you know, it's right before preseason. It's the most, the best we're supposed to feel all summer. He's like, no, you don't understand. Like I'm having to eat so much after I'm already full that like it hurts to eat more and like I didn't understand it until I got back and then like just seeing you know because we all eat lunch downstairs together and like just seeing the amount of food he would have to just shovel and then the shakes and then more food and then more shakes I was like he said the shakes were the thing that got him he he said he would milk those for like a half hour 45 minutes just to get those shakes down think about it it's a 32 ounce shake yeah that's he said that it was pounds mm-hmm. of shake <laughs> like, yeah that's crazy and he's doing multiple like yeah, i think he said three or four a day yeah like the amount like i want to know the physical weight of food he was eating a day way yeah. too much well you think really eight, eight, eight pounds of just shakes before the food even starts right like that and that's not counting like water gatorade <laughs> any electrolytes nothing like that's just shakes yeah because i know when he when he he was telling us like third day of nationals last year he weighed in at the scale of 215 yeah i'm like holy crap man like you in the off season are heavier than he was i'm sure at some yeah. point yeah no for sure like the the yeah there was days not last summer but the summer before that that i would come in bigger than he would now um, was that ever a thought in your mind that you two would ever end up would, would switch spots uh not a serious thought no like him and i would on on you know this year's making weight this year was a lot easier than last year um and i think a lot of my performances showed that but uh yeah 
there was thoughts in my head and then like i would make comments of like dude like this sucks I, it feels like i'm dying making weight yeah i remember you you yeah, when, you, when we talked year. yeah when we talked your yeah. freshman year you said your weight bad. cut was bad well and i i i attribute that to a handful of things um you know some out of my control some in my control uh you know what what i put in my mouth uh nutrition wise is definitely in my control uh but yeah it was you know i didn't do it right and, and what, I, what really I, changed I, between this year um being more mindful of what what i'm eating um you know there was still not good weight cuts but there weren't like terrible like you felt like you were dying look, yeah right yeah looking at the clock going am i gonna make weight or like oh my god like there's 10 minutes you know 10 minutes left in our warm-up you know i was coming in and four pounds over am i am i gonna you know get the weight off am i gonna have to run more um so i mean there was none of that did you ever um, miss no 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 wow. never missed a weight when oh, good for you man um i don't think i've sat in i don't think i've sat out yet so. were you were you was there was there times where you were 197 to 0 on the scale yeah yeah. yeah not this year but last year yeah. last year yeah there were there was definitely times where you know i'm i'm praying that there's not a 0. 0.05 difference in our scale and and you know between the check scale and the you know weigh in scale um but yeah you know this year it, it definitely wasn't as bad and i i kind of attribute oh, yeah. that to. i think a, a lot of people you know, a lot of people saw you make a Greco world team and, you know, we saw, you know, you growing up, you know, and, and, you know, becoming this top athlete, you know, number one recruit in the country, you know, came into Wisconsin. A lot of people had a lot of, you know, big, big wishes and big praises for, for Braxton Amos. And I think, you know, a lot of people out there, if you, you know, I'm sure you're not a, a guy that pays a ton of attention to social media, but a lot of people were, were saying some, some slack about you and saying oh, yeah. some things, yeah. but I think, um, you know, you had a lot of personal stuff going on your freshman year. You know, you kind of shared that with the public a little bit, talking yeah. about your mom and stuff. And I think that kind of opened the eyes of the people a little bit, you know, kind of saying, you know, life's not easy for anybody. Yeah, you know, no, no. And I mean, I hadn't really got a good dose of adversity until then. And, you know, going from like the, the peak of, of what where you can be at that age, you know, yeah. there, there's you were him yeah yeah i mean there's not very many other steps you can take above where i was at um to being at the lowest i had ever been you know grades were in the trash i, I was losing to guys that that two years before that i i you Tucker know could have smoked yeah. um and then you know with and then mom and then even more grades and even, you know, it, it just kind of compounded on itself and then the weight cut. And it was just, it was bad. It was, it was bad. And I did not handle it the right way. Um, but you know, we're still here. We're still, we're still kicking. And you're fighting, uh, man. I'm, you're I'm fighting. Enough, you know, I, I can't, you know, it, it's making me who I am. So, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, man. I think, and I think, you know, this year, yeah. This year, man, you had an awesome year. You really did. You really looked like you were – you're on the up. You know, you're 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 yeah. on the up, and I think a lot of people noticed that. And <laughs> can't catch yeah, a break, yeah. man. Can't catch a break yeah. at Nationals. Yeah. You know, at Nationals, obviously, yeah. uh, you know, talk a little bit about what happened at Nationals and, you know, what the plan is for the future. Yeah, so Nationals w was interesting. Um. So, yeah, let's just start at the beginning of the match. Uh, you know, we're wrestling. Um, or, yeah, let's really just start at the after the challenge. So, you know, we get done with the, the, with the challenge. Um, you know, I'm thinking, you know, kind of dodged a bullet. You know, I'm, I'm due for, you know, one every match or so of, of a close call. And then, you know, I, we get right back into it. So... I get, you know, underhook, high single, uh, he sprawls and, you know, I extend my arms, not even like super stretched out or anything. And whenever I hit the mat, um, I feel my shoulders slip 
you know, you, you, most people have a little bit of play on their shoulders, especially wrestlers. So you, you know what I mean? Like, but it, it was more, it was more. And then like, as soon as I tried to, so like when it slipped, it didn't hurt. And then when I tried to move it, it just, it was on fire. Um, That's usually how then, you know the fight, it's the burn. It's not, it doesn't yeah, burn. Yeah. yeah. And like, I went to try to move it and it wouldn't move. And I was like, what the heck? So I, I like, and I was screaming. Cause like, obviously it was, it, it was probably the worst pain I've ever been in. And like, I, I went to grab my shoulder and like, obviously you, I, I didn't feel like the, the, a sho- like a normal shoulder. It was just like skin. And then like my shoulder was hanging down right about here. <laughs> um, but like once I realized what it was, like my body kind of, you know, not shocked, but adrenaline kicked in. I was like, okay, you know, let's breathe through this. You know, at that point, our, our trainer started coming over, realized that, oh my God, Braxton's shoulder's out. Um, he put it right back in, like as I was laying there, uh, we walk, we walk over to the corner and him and Bono were like, do you, do you want to? do you want to finish this? I was like, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like I, I didn't come here to go, you know, for, for us to stop the second something starts hurting. Like, no, it, you know, I think <laughs> talking to the, the coaches, I think the, the saying I was saying was like with my shoulder on it, you know, from, from 300. Uh, and, and Bono was like, dude, you can, are you sure? And I was like, yeah, let's go. Like it's in Gary, our trainer. I was like, do whatever testing you need to go do. And like, let's, let's do this before. So were you able to move your arm at this point? A little bit. So, so when a shoulder dislocates the muscles spasm um, and thankful the first time we got it back in before the muscles started doing anything. Um, so the guy got it, you know, we do the strength testing. It hurts like you would not believe, but the, the trainer saw that I, I was going out there with or without his permission. <laughs> like they were going to have to pull me off the mat. Um, and so, yeah, like they, they counted as an injury time. So, so uh, the NDSU guy got, got to pick bottom. Uh and my plan at that point was I have to matter. Like, I know my shoulder's coming out at any time. Cause I mean, it, that's what shoulders do. So my plan was just to Matt return him to his back, pin him and get off the mat before <laughs> anything bad <laughs> happens. Good, Cause like, I was like, all right, you know, if I can get, if I can get to tonight, we can get, you know, one of those big braces on it and we'll mm-hmm. figure this out. And, uh, yeah, like I, he got my hand before I could start mat returning him. And like, I, I was in on an underhook and like, literally all he did was just pull a little bit, like just pulled my arm, like not like yanking on it, trying to get it out, but literally just dropped his weight and like twisted and it went out again and it hurt worse than the first time. Um, and at that point I just kind of walked, walked over to the trainer. I was like, we get, no. I was like, we, we, I can't go like it, it, like I can't, it's not going to be able to work. Um, and then I laid <laughs> on the carpet there behind the table for four or five minutes trying to get it back in. Um, yeah, we realized yeah. that, yeah, the muscles, the muscles weren't working with us. Um, couldn't get it back in Matt side. So we, we walked to the back, um, I think three or four, like three people tried to put it back in. And then the, uh, one of the orthopedic surgeons that was there ended up putting it back in and we did x-rays and put me in a sling and they were like, yeah, you're like, it's your choice, but you're done. And I know that feeling uh, all too well, similar thing kind of happened to me this year. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's not a good feeling. No, shoulders aren't fun. No, no. I mean, let me tell you that brace does not really help. No, and that's what that's ultimately what what why I decided to not not even, you know, come back for the second the, the next round was 
you know, I had a real honest talk with our, with our physician. And I was like, doc, it, I really want to try this, but you know, I, I trust you, you know, with everything I got, am I, am I going to be defenseless out there? And she's like, you're not going to be able to use your left arm. She's like, Braxton, you're, you can't wrestle with one arm, like with or without the brace, it's going to come out again. Yep. And then you can't use it. Yep. She's like, can you beat this guy with one arm? I was like, no, <laughs> like pride is saying, let me try. But she's like, you're, you're gonna, if you haven't torn, anything you're going to this time and even if you did tear a little bit you know you still have bicep tendons you still have rotator cuffs you still have you know a whole bunch of other stuff to to tear if you if you want to try this and like I was I was thinking about it and then like I coughed and it like it started sliding more as I was coughing I was like if it's if it's going to come out again as I'm coughing What's yeah. going to happen when someone like gets hand control and like pulls away or, or yeah. not even like, tries to go after it, which at the national tournament, I hope someone does. Cause that, I mean, it's the national tournament. That's your job to, you know, go after guys. Um, yeah, no doubt. Yeah. But I, I had a similar thing, but my, my uh, mistake was wrestling a match after. Mm. Mm-hmm. So it was right before our open. And then, you know, I I wrestled with the brace for a while and every time I wrestled with the brace I noticed it didn't help like at all and like talking to everyone I've talked to since because like you know I was second guessing myself the entire time of like the entire time the tournament was going on like especially watching the background matches or the backside matches I was like man could I be there and then you know I talked to Dustin Plot's dad. I was like, when Dustin wore the brace, did it help? And he's like, not really. No. And it restricts your breathing so much. Yeah. Yeah. It, so, it, I mean, it's it, terrible. Yeah. You know, so it's a bad way for my season to end. But, you know, at the same time, you know, I was doing what I loved at the national tournament. Yeah. You got more seasons there's ahead. Not, yeah. There's, there's not many other places to, for that to happen and, and me look and go, you know, it, it it's not, you know, I'm not happy about it, but I'm at peace about it, if that makes sense. Did anything tear? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it's. <laughs> it's jacked yeah, up. It, it, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, from what they can see on the MRI, it, it's not good. Um, you know, I go in a uh, week from Monday, you know, so like 10 days, you know, out from surgery right now. So. It's, uh, yeah, just kind of part of it. Hey, you know, it's, it's part of the sport. Like you said, it's part of a, you know, part of it. And yeah. they're, they're assuming that, you know, I'm sure you'll, you'll be fully ready to go next season. Yeah, I, I, I think so. You know, we, we don't really know. We won't really know until I start healing for sure. You know, when I'm, when I'm going to be back and, you know, fully ready to go. But so that's uh. Oh. The word is out Hopefully there is. that Braxton Braxton's Greco World Team spot will be up for whoever wants it. Right then, at that point. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, the opens in what, like, two weeks? Yeah. You know. Uh, we better not well, see you there. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. no, no. <laughs> we won't be in Vegas, boys. You know. Surprise, no, sadly, surprise. sadly, uh, Braxton will not be in Vegas to compete for the World yeah, Team spot. Yeah. You know, but... I don't think that would you have a, to compete anyway? Yeah. Oh yeah, because what? Because yeah, so anyone that didn't get a medal gets to gets to go to Vegas. That's lovely. Yeah. No, I mean, I I was looking forward to it. You know, I, I was. You so know, perfect here's world. my big question for you, right, Brax? Why do you wrestle Greco and not freestyle? So. The Honestly, it's like really certified themselves as like we're one or two in freestyle, you know, how many the last how many years? But Greco, man, we got one guy that's ranked in, in the ranked like top well, 10. Here's my thing. Here's my thing. I want to do both. Like I, I want to be an Olympic champ in both. Freco, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Freco. But look at 97 kg right now in freestyle. 
Yeah, I don't want to wrestle Kyle Snyder. Yeah, you got Kyle Snyder. You Fox. got Colin Moore. You Fox. have Jaden Cox. You have Mike Mock. You have I don't know if Ty Walls is back down at ninety seven or not. Um, you know, I I know I'm and forgetting. Plus, and plus the national champ this year, Nino. You have the national champ. Yeah, you got Nino Elam. Um, you got Elam. You you. you Sloan, I think, is registered. You have so many guys that I am missing top tier guys because the top, well, the top two are are two of the best, you know, in our country's history. You know, Jaden, Jaden, and Kyle are, are two of the best guys ever. Um, I mean, you had no easy trip yeah. going to Greco either, though. Um, what's his name? Was there? Um, yeah, you know, it, it, with Greco, Angelo Hancock, yeah, yeah, with Greco, you know, you have Tracy, or you had Tracy. He he's now doing well for himself. You know, WWE. Um, you know, you had Boykin, you had Sheridan, and then you had Maley, and then I think Dan Miller, but but I think he's off doing, uh, you know, being a Marine. I wonder if I wonder if Coon comes back to make a team. I heard uh, somebody somebody through the grapevine said he's trained. I've heard rumors, but yeah. I, I don't. So I like think, me, not, who did we have on? We had Thomas Sello on. Thomas Sello said he's ready. He's training. He's been training. He's ready to go. That Kunas? Yeah, he's been back at Michigan the last couple of months. And I mean, listen, that's that's awesome. You know, because I, I know he cool was a big say. Greco guy. He was a big yeah, Greco listen, guy. I, I love Schultz too. Which, if it's not him, I'm sure it'll no, probably be Schultz. Loaded. Yeah. Heavyweights. You know, heavyweight is deep at our in our country. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, my weight. Nowry, Nowry's pretty good. Yeah, got Nowry. Um, have you guys had him on yet today? Uh, no, he had a camp today, so we're gonna have him on in a couple of weeks. He's a, he's a he's a fun guy. I like I like Max. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, it, it, with Greco, I have the chance to do something that nobody else. In America has done in a very long time. Win a Greco world medal. Yeah. Greco yeah, that's Olympic record. Yeah. A, a world or Olympic championship in Greco. Um, you know, is it going to be easy? No. Is, is making the freestyle team going to be easy? No. <laughs> which, which do you think is going to be harder, though? I don't know. You it, like, listen. What do you think? What do you think a hypothetical score between you and, and, and Kyle Snyder is? <laughs> Uh, so the last time Kyle and I wrestled, I, now, was this an actual competition or was no, this- no, this was, this was when I was, oh geez. So Kyle was still at Ohio state. Mm-hmm. I was in high school. Yeah. I was in high school coming up to the RTC and he was, he was getting ready for one of the tournaments like one of the international tournaments and literally they were, they were running like kind of man in the middle type of deal with Kyle. Um, and it was like a second workout of the day. And like, I snuck a takedown on him. Like he was like, he, no, wait, wait, wait. It, this was, this was like a cheap, like, I don't think he was even ready. <laughs> I just kind of jumped on him. And and got a quick takedown and like honestly probably the one of the dumbest things I've done. <laughs> I'm assuming there was consequences to that action. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Like, like, like I've taken some rough beatings in a wrestling room before. That was top three when there was multiple other guys rotating in on him and he was already like it, he again. He was on his second practice of the day, getting rotated in on. I think that I think the group don't don't quote me on this, but I think it was me, Colin, Kyle, and Miles. Maybe. Hold on a second. I don't. Wow. I, I got like two takedowns the entire practice. So it was you, Colin Moore. I think. Yeah. I, I I'm not entirely sure, but I I think it was me, Colin Moore, Kyle. Maybe Miles Martin. Yeah. Wow. 
Wow. Dude, that, <laughs> oh, so, man. That growing, up, dude, you. Listen, growing up, I was in the perfect RTC range. Okay, mm-hmm. so listen to this. Within, I don't know if the rules have changed, but like when I was coming through, it was 250 miles, right? I had Ohio State, Ohio University, WVU, Pitt, Penn State, either Maryland or Navy, one either one or the other, I don't, not both, and Virginia Tech. I want to say it was probably Navy. Navy's closer, I think, to and you then Mich- Maryland. I think Michigan was also within the 250. So I was in, within eight RTC ranges. Like you could go to Penn State. You could scrap it up with Bo Nickel. You could go to – yeah, That's like I, I got I got beat up a lot. I mean, that yeah, made that... you the number one guy in the country, so Yeah. Yeah, you know. Yeah, man. Definitely incredible with those incredible, guys, man. And you know, your career is nowhere near complete. You know, you got oh, a lot of wrestling over. left. I, I still have I still have what two years left to college and another ten left total, probably. Ten more years of Braxton Amos. Well, oh, aren't wow. we excited about that? Hopefully, yeah, heavyweight right? nation, I'm, I'm here hopefully, to stay, boys. hopefully, heavyweight nation is here for the for all of Braxton Amos's career. <laughs> oh, listen, you guys are going to be a lo- around a lot longer than I will. I I promise you guys that. Hopefully, you hopefully, guys, hopefully. Dude, hopefully. Listen, you guys have been blowing up everywhere, and it's awesome. Yeah. Just don't forget, we love you more than anybody else. All right. I don't know, forget listen, Braxton. Listen, don't forget Derek. How long of a conversation did you and I have last night? Oh, man. I was telling Matt, like, like so this is, like, Matthew's, like, first time. Like, this is – he's been here for about a month. And okay. when I tell when I tell Matthew about this – and this is going so off topic. For anybody listening, we, this whole podcast is just going to be a shoot in the shit. <laughs> okay. I apologize. But this was, this was a thought of, like, us at, like, 9 o'clock last night watch, <laughs> watching Trent's interview. <laughs> like, I was just, like – Listen, man, like, I call, like, Braxton sends me a snap. Like, I'm friends with Braxton on Snapchat. So, like, Braxton sends me a snap. I have Braxton's phone number from, like, Braxton sent me his phone. He didn't text me or anything. Didn't Snapchat me his phone number. He sent it to me in the mail with a T-shirt. So, I was like, oh, cool. Like, so now I have Braxton's phone number or whatever. But I was telling Matthew this, like, over the last month, I'm like, you're going to do this and you're going to build relationships and these guys are going to go from – D1 wrestlers that are making world teams and all these crazy athletes to being your friend. Like you're just genuine friend that you could just text and be like, Hey, what's up? Like, how you doing? They have a normal conversation. with. That's pretty cool. Real on my end too. Cause Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I guys that I've looked up to my entire life, literally like since I can remember I've met. Yeah. And, and it's, that's our next thing. We're gonna start meeting you guys. That's what we're excited mm-hmm. for. We're gonna, we're excited to start start meeting a lot of these guys because, like like you said, you know, we've built these great relationships. Yeah. We've never met. So what we're excited for, especially for you, is you know, road trip baby. Yeah, road trip number one, road trip baby number one, and number two. Your last season will be nationals in Philadelphia. You your last time you will compete at a national tournament as long as everything goes well. Yeah, if, we'll everything, be, if everything goes right. We'll be in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, which is right in our backyard. It's an hour drive. So we're okay. excited to, you know, that's going to be big for Heavyweight Nation, especially we'll have so, another, we have another two years of growth before then. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, kind of coming full circle with Philly, that was my first Nationals I ever went to, was, was Philly. And wow, I your think, career started and closed, man. And I think, I think – that reader wrestled at that nationals in Philly. Wow. That's awesome. So your first nationals you ever saw was in Philly and your last nationals you ever wrestle your national, your last nationals you ever wrestle will be in Philadelphia. Yeah. Wow. That's that that gave me goosebumps. That gave me goosebumps, man. Holy crap. Oh, your mom, your, your mom, your parents are, I'm sure your whole family will be there. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean... They'll all be crying. The tears will be shed. Oh, listen, like... So, imagine if it was one more year after that. Ohio. Cleveland. Cleveland. That's three hours away from my hometown. 
Oh, the Amos fans would be through the roof. <laughs> they'd be, they'd be, so like, they'd be I, like, I grew up wrestling Ohio, like with Ohio guys, my mm-hmm. entire career. Yeah. Well, West Virginia's two or three hours away. I have fa- like I have family that lives in Cleveland. I have family that lives in Columbus. I have family that lives all over Ohio. That'd be wild. Yeah. And I wish that we could. <laughs> I just wish like up we, just, we right, just yeah. take yeah, out like, call, we remove call and be like listen we need it in Cleveland this we remove day. we remove Missouri slide PA in Ohio forward and put Missouri after Ohio that's what I'm saying like I want I would rather my last one be you know go out as close to home as possible well Philly's yeah. not that bad I mean it's I'm sure no, it's, Philly's it's, like four hour five hours something like that mm-hmm. You know, it's yeah, not we fair. also uh, we did the math. It'll only take a twelve-hour drive for us to get to Wisconsin to get to Madison. So twelve hours ain't too bad at all. But I, I, it took me twelve hours to get home after national. So you know, yeah, it's doable. Tulsa. I promise. Tulsa to Tulsa to Wisconsin, man, twelve hours. No, no, Wisconsin to West Virginia was oh, twelve. Mm-hmm. Twelve hours. Holy crap! Yeah, That'd yeah. So I, I went home for a little. I went home for that weekend to you know kind of be with the fam yeah decompress a little bit and you know instead of camping yeah you know, we were talking before you can't like, really I, camp i uh, can't really camp with one arm can you right yeah i was like that was literally so like i was sitting you know because everybody has like their little back area at nationals you know I, and after i think it was day two or three of nationals and and the trainer and or not the trainer the the doctor and i were sitting there I looked at her, I like, out. it was like awkwardly quiet. I looked at her, I was like, hey, um, can I go camping in the middle of the woods by myself for like three days with this? Or like, is that a bad idea? And she's like, why, why would you do that? Like, think about that. If it goes out again, can you put it back in? I was like, well, you guys can teach me. And she's like, no, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't. You just walk up a trail and see Braxton Amos running into a tree. <laughs> His arm is just dangling. <laughs> yeah. uh, Crazy man, it, it, it's it, like uh, I said, it, it's just been cool. Like just you, you were like the first guy that like we really built a relationship with. You, Trent, like Don Bradley, um, Kekheisen, like you guys were like our first like real like friends outside of this just being a business. So it's awesome. Whenever we get to tech, whenever we get to like talk, it's like oh, like it's a good time. Like, yeah, we're, no, we're yeah. just... I, it, it it's it's been it's been a wild ride, you know. Ride, when man. you guys blow up and and watching you, man, it's been wild watching you, bro. Your ups, your downs, your in between, and I will defend you to the day we die. Thank that you. Braxton Amos I is still it. he is still just as good as he was in high school. Yeah, if not better. Uh, you know, you we. As much as I try to not let it get to me, you know, I still read the message boards. I still, uh, I, I still see the tweets and Instagram comments. Uh, but just, you know, I, I take screenshots. You know, I, I, I remember. Moving so, wrong. Well, in two years, three years, you know, however long it is, I guess we'll, we'll see. You know. Yeah. Yeah, man, a hundred percent. Awesome. 100%, yeah. uh, we got a couple a couple fan questions here. A couple right. fan questions for you. Sadly, none of them are from your Wisconsin teammates. I will I'm let you actually, know now. Listen, I'm, I'm kind of happy about that. <laughs> listen, yeah, I tried. I heard they're about I tr- to go in on you. I tried. Yeah, my, listen, I, I, I we tried. We tried to stir them up a little bit. They oh, failed boy. miserably. So I think they're I think they're all like their brains are all just set on waiting for Austin Gomez. Like I think especially DJ. DJ is waiting for Austin Gomez. Uh, yeah, yeah. Especially after, after his or... video, his video will be out tomorrow for everybody listening. Right. Yeah, his video will be out tomorrow, so you could hear uh, some of the questions that DJ DJ Hamity got asked by uh, by Austin Gomez. Oh, I can only imagine. It was bad, man. Um, first was, first question fun. for you is a little different. A little different. Um, okay. Three words you would use to describe yourself in wrestling. Hmm. I don't know. Three words. You could just like describe your wrestling style, describe what wrestling yeah, means to know. you, like, I, anything like that. 
Oh man. Let me come back to that one. All right. All right. Um, uh, one of the fans wants to know, what do you do for fun in West Virginia? What do I do? For thing. Is that from my roommate? That would be from uh, Captain Crunch. Yes. Captain Crunch. All right. Uh, let's see. In West Virginia, we hunt, we fish, we hike. Uh, that's about all I do when I go home, honestly. Um, we, I would go to the movies a lot. I don't know. I don't, I don't really do a whole lot. <laughs> that what you do in West Virginia? Hunt, fish, we hike, go to the movies? Listen. We have more gas stations and Mexican restaurants than I'm pretty sure we have like anything else in my hometown. Okay. So, do you like I, Mexican and, food? You a big Mexican food guy? Not really. Uh-uh. Okay. Not, so that's <laughs> not good for you <laughs> then. No, not. I mean, I don't mind the the occasional, you know, burrito or whatnot. But no, I'm not not a big Mexican food guy. Um, I mean, you can't you can't not like a good gas station though. <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> Not do they all like? Ones. Do they all like fight about like who has the cheapest gas? So they are all arguing like. No, no, no not really. No, no, because like we're on a major. So where I'm at, we're like, so my hometown's like real close to a highway. You know, the nearest like big city is 15 minutes. You know, 10, 15 minutes one way. The middle of nowhere, no cell reception, nothing. You know, not not even running water, is probably 10 to 15 minutes the other direction. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 we got a little, good little mix of both worlds. Um, Living in the middle of nowhere. It's great. I love it. That's why, like, every time I go home, it, I try to stay outside as much as I can. Relaxing. Clear your head. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Nephew, I mean, I, when I go home, you know, I, I see the see the parents, see a couple of my friends from back home and, you know, decompress as much as I can. Awesome, man. Uh <laughs> another one from my their lovely roommate uh braxton how how is your dog beans so that's my sister's dog actually um well you can tell your roommate she fumbled that question <laughs> i'll i'll be sure to be sure to tell her uh i good i think i, I don't know I, I, <laughs> it, it was up for to visit like like so i really wanted the dog and you know, I, as a college athlete, you don't have time for a dog. Uh, no. you, know, you barely, you know, I'm barely responsible for myself at times, you know, with everything I have to do. Um, but yeah, so like I was, I convinced my parents to like, let me, you know, keep the dog up here for a few days. So yeah, that that's kind of where that came. Was came it fun? From. Oh yeah, no, it, it was, it was fun. Like walking, cause it was still nice outside. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, kind of like how it is now, you know. Shorts and sweatshirt weather. Lucky you, Braxton. Lucky you, bro. It, it so it's a last, cold Easter here in Northeast PA. Derek, last week it snowed, or two weeks ago it snowed thirteen inches. Yeah, that's crazy. So, yeah. Uh, we got an interesting one here. What is Braxton's relationship status? Ha <laughs> ha! Too busy to have one. Too busy to have one. Good yeah. answer. Yeah. So I'm. Um, so after I got hurt, I kind of decided that I should probably start looking for internships to, you know, check that box for graduation. Um, so yeah, I've been looking for internships, trying to, I picked up an extra class for like the last month of school. Um, you know, between rehab workouts and, and class, I, I don't really have a whole lot of time. So I am busy. Yeah, the man yeah. is on a mission. The man is uh he's on a mission and he's he's bettering himself and bettering yeah, his future. I, and sometimes you gotta put the women aside to uh Yeah, listen, Jordan Peterson and, and Jocko podcasts and homework, bro. Like that's that's about all I got right now. Yeah, man. It's a, it's not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. No, no, no. It's it's a lot cheaper not having a, a significant other. Factual statement. Yeah. Right? Factual this statement. This is true. And then uh, last one um, is we kind of we already talked about the the last question, Rosa. That uh, I don't know if you're reading them from the thing. Yeah, well. so uh, what are your hobbies when you're in Wisconsin? What do you like to do when you're when you're at you know at, at, in Madison with your teammates and all that kind of stuff? Um, so 
outside, like not anything completely related to wrestling or, or academics. Cause I mean, that's during season, you know, that, yeah. that's, what we're, we're talking about. like you yeah. have a day off you, you and the boys get together. What are you guys going to do? Uh, probably, you know, play call of duty, you know, Trent plays 2k. I play COD. Some we heard play about Trent's 2k. I was shocked. I'm not going to lie to you. That might've been one of the most shocking things I've ever heard. So Trent and I were roommates last year. So like. He's the point guard for the, for the wrestling. He's the point guard for the Wisconsin wrestling 2k team. Trent Hilger. In case you're curious. Yes. Big Thor. He is, he is the point guard for the, for their 2k team. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Trent, Trent plays 2k. Some guys play Fortnite. You know, I'll play Call of Duty or Warzone or, or whatnot. Um, who's the so best? Yeah. Who's the best COD player on the team? I don't really know. So I, I don't play the same game modes they do. Some of the other guys do. So we don't really play together very often. Mm. Solid answer. Solid answer. Uh, DJ DJ was big on Fortnite. He said uh, he loves, loves himself some Fortnite for yeah. sure. He says some Zone I, Wars. He said we might have to we might have to run it a little little game of Zone Wars with DJ. So this this vent uh-huh. runs from my room to his room. Mm. So whenever we're we can we can tell whenever we're having really bad games, uh, because we will hear each other through the vent just carrying on. Okay. It's, uh, yeah, man, that's uh, it's it's always good, you know. We get to you know pick up the sticks, play a little bit of games, you know, blow off a little steam. But yeah, so we'll, we'll pick up the sticks. We'll watch UFC, Bellator. Um, any of that in your future? You want to punch people in the face for a living? Not really, not yeah. not really. You know, I, I've I'm pretty set on on my two. You know, I, I either want to coach in college after this is all said and done, or, you know, I want to, you know, serve, serve in the army in some capacity, you know, whether that's an officer, enlisted, WCAP, special forces, you know, just some regular, you know, Joe Schmo, and and that's, you know, there to put his 20 in, you know, I, I grew up wanting to do those two things. And, you know, I'm, I'm still kind of set on, you know, one of those two things, you know, I either want to work with very high level athletes, uh, you know, helping them be, be the best version of themselves or, you know, doing, being a ninja. So being a ninja. Yeah. (laughs) You know, I, I have friends that, that are, you know, in the pipelines to, to do some really cool stuff and, and some, you know, I've had the honor to meet meet some guys that have done you know some some really you know cool cool things um so yeah you know i I, you know my my role models growing up were you know kyle snyder jordan burrows uh and then you know pretty much anybody that that wore the stars and stripes overseas you know i looked up to so yeah awesome to hear man you know it's awesome to hear that you know there's an opportunity for you to, you know, do this and, you know, compete at the highest level and go wrestle. And then after, you know, four or five years, go ahead and kind of just fade yeah. away into the distance and go serve your country yeah, you know, and be an honest man. Yeah. You know, I, I don't get me wrong. If, if a coaching opportunity opens up, you know, it would be, you know, a dream come true. Um, but, you know, it, it, how many coaching jobs? Well, a lot of coaching jobs are opening up right now. But on a new, on a normal year, most, most of the time, you know, how many successful college guys are getting out of, you know, getting out of college wrestling and how many RTC coaching jobs or, or normal coaching jobs are opening up, you know, not yeah. the ratio is kind of, kind of wild. Yeah. yeah and, and, you know, good to hear that there's a chance you stick with the sport, but Matthew uh, has some questions that we came up with. I'm going right, to yeah. step right, out well. quick and run to the bathroom. I'll let Matthew kind of take this over and go ahead and have his little segment. All right. Let's hear him. All right. We got, we got a lot of fun questions, you know, uh, I'm just going to start with your toughest opponent. You know, who, who's the guy that gave you the hardest time? Oh, um, honestly, this year I would either say Braun Eagle or Dean. 
um, or, or even younger, you know, it was, I don't know, it kind of depended on what was going on. Um, but yeah, yeah. Well, one Style of those matchups and all. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, with younger, you know, it, it was beginning early, early in the year and, you know, I was in three or four times in that match on his leg and just couldn't finish. Frustrating. Um, very. And then, you know, with Braun Eagle, <laughs> we went into, you know, I don't know how many overtimes uh, the first time. And then the second time, you know, I was winning. And then with like 15 seconds left, 10 seconds left, he gets the takedown to, to put him ahead. And then with Dean, you know, I, I think part of the result was, you know, my me tweaking my knee and kind of freaking out about it and then you know letting letting the Penn State returning national champ thing get to me um you know it, it obviously he's really freaking good um but I, yeah I would say those three were my were my toughest matches of the year and you know we are heavyweight nation so we already always gonna have some food questions oh we're getting into the food I'm back well, all right <laughs> I like to start with uh, favorite ice cream flavor. Vanilla with sprinkles. Wow, quick, quick. All right. Uh, Why are you so bland? What's up? That's such a bland choice. Bro, uh, you can't. Six year olds order that. Well, yeah. So? All right. Respect, I guess. (laughs) Favorite food in general. I don't don't like chocolate. Not just ice cream. Cool. It's hard to beat a good steak. I agree. Steak guy, steak, steak. guy. Good steak yeah, or some yeah. Good pasta. I like steak and I like French fries. I don't have you very mean, many French fries, but I do. I do eat a lot of steak. You and Wyatt Hendrickson, Brian, with the steak. Yeah. That, that's a guy that got big. Oh, oh, oh yeah. I'm gonna. We're gonna talk a little bit of Wyatt Hendrickson. Wyatt Hendrickson actually did. He did speak about you yesterday and said that you were a very nice guy. He oh, said that you were, right. you, you were very nice. Um, I, uh, Thank you, Wyatt. He, he told us that he once in one day, he ate six pounds of red meat in one day. Mm-hmm. He had two steaks for breakfast, two steaks for, <laughs> no, two steaks for, two steaks for breakfast, a package of ground beef for lunch, and then another two steaks for dinner. Six pounds so of like red meat. Five, six burgers. Yeah, oh, six burgers, not steak. Sorry, six burgers for dinner. Damn. Big boy. Yeah, and he boy. also, just in case you're curious, that man is 250 pounds, abs, and runs a nine-minute mile and a half. Oh, yeah. No, listen, I don't – like, he – That's a big boy. Dude – so, like, him and I wrestled together on, on the junior world team for Uber. That's what he was so talking like, about. You wrestled the junior worlds, yeah. Yeah, so, like, in the training camp, you know, him and I were – he wasn't, like – a ton bigger like he was still obviously bigger than me but he wasn't like as big as he was now and then you know fast forward two years and like I didn't really notice how freaking yoked he got until like this year and I was like dude like what the heck like he looks like Captain America like yeah not like let let's separate the fact that he's you know at the academy but like he literally looks like captain america after after the super soldier yeah, thing. yeah he like, uh, he's he, big boy like, like i want to know what his bmi is at 250 he has he has to has he has to have abs he has to so like yeah like I don't like know. He probably knows. Probably, I, I should ask. You know the decks of machines. He's to, probably to he's them. probably yeah I would bet what 15% if that Less than that, probably eight, it's eight, nine, probably right around there. I, I mean, bet. so at, at the end of season, I was at nine and a half. So I mean, he's probably at ten, yeah, ten and a half, yeah, ten and a half. I mean, Trent was Trent was around, I think, around there. Trent's a big boy too. Trent Trent's huge. Like well, now, Trent's not anymore. He told us that he already he lost thirty. Now. He already lost thirty pounds. Yeah, he's yeah. Down it's... to like two. He's back down to like two twenty already. Yeah, like him and I are close to the same size now. Like he still probably has 
15, 20 pounds on me right now. You know, he's probably at 230, 235 right now. Yeah, I'm at boy. somewhere between 215 and 220 right now. So, I mean, he's he's still a decent bigger bigger than me, but I figure after our surgeries, him and I will probably end up being the same size. I tend to, I tend to eat all of the food when I'm sitting around post post surgery. So what's your end of the same, what's your favorite snack? Like what's like something that you could just eat until like you you're sick. Oh my gosh. Hang on. Let me find them. They're, they are the best thing ever. They are honey roasted almonds with like a honey coating thing. Like they're, they're, they're good. They're really good. Um, but yeah, I, I'll do that. Um, what do you think? Uh, I, I keep thinking of these questions on the fly. We should add these yeah. to the list. Um, what do you think your most heavyweight moment is eating? Like, what is if you could think of a moment of you where you ate something, you're like, damn, I'm a big boy. Mm, I'm trying to think. After nationals this year. I don't know. Food wise, I don't. I haven't really gone crazy after nationals this year because, like, I, I could do pretty much anything within moderation. But actually, no, that's a lie. That's a lie. Uh a couple days after we got back, I went to five. Like, I I ordered five guys. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, that was. What'd you get? Oh, um, I ended up ordering like. You know how like they'll do like their large is just a bag of fries, like a mm-hmm. yeah, big big bag. Um, so I did a a bag of fries, double cheeseburger, which are you know, yeah, the yeah. size of my head. Um, I think a hot dog. <laughs> uh yeah. Who goes to five guys to get a hot dog? Well, like it was they had like a deal on DoorDash. <laughs> Bro, I'm not gonna turn down like a three dollar hot dog. Rex, that's a valid. That's a valid. Yeah, I mean, deal, listen, that was. I mean, shit. I'm I'm about to eat a salad and you know what's left of my pasta, steak and pasta. So I mean, I most of my weight hasn't come from just eating and eating and eating. You know, it's a bunch of just extra water weight. So there you go. There's a. Braxton's and meals, not man. being able to wrestle or really work out. So yeah. definitely. So, you know, what do you think is going to be, what do you think next season looks like for the Wisconsin Badgers? Uh, good. I think hopefully good. Um, you know, we, we got Barnett coming back. Um, you know, we got a handful of 33s, you know, young guys that are hungry. You know, we got we got Zargo, we got Gomez both coming back. Um, you know, we got hungry guys coming in. You know, at 57 that that have, that are either redshirting right now, or you know, this is their their time to make the lineup. That are all hungry. You know, we got we got the best little kid DJ coming back. Um, He's a dog. He is a dog. I will give it to him. Kids he a dog. Is, yeah. Like it, it. And like we we were. Trent and I were sitting on the, you know, because him and I still go and watch practice. And like, so most of the guys are back, back training again. So him and I were just sitting on the, sitting on the wall watching and like watching him just play wrestle is, is, it's, I don't even know how, it, it's like a kid's like a cheat code. I, I don't, I don't, like, I don't understand how, like, from his freshman year, I mean, his freshman year, he comes into the into the Big Ten yeah. as an eighteen year old kid and shocks the world. Like mm-hmm. and me saying him like a like he's like a cheat code isn't isn't me, you know, putting like, that down. Like he even he beat Grandpa like, Marinelli. Do else do? Yeah. Like yeah. It, and like doing like doing solid technique that like Trent and I look at each other like how how yeah. how did he do that and like. I, I will try, promise we can try to do that forever and, and not be able to hit it. So I will promise the fans this you will see DJ Hamity in a national final, if not a national champion, before his career is over. I would no agree. Doubt. 100%. No, no doubt. I would agree. 100%. You know, no, short it's... of something crazy happening. I, I, I agree there. 
Yeah, hundred percent. Kid has the making of a national champ. Yeah, he's a stud. And you know, he honest to God was like somebody we really didn't know a lot about coming out of high school. He wasn't a no. you know super like, high had, level like. I didn't know about him until until he committed. Um, you know, I think he committed a couple weeks after Joe and I both did, and and yeah, like and when he came in, so like him and I came in to like watch a duel together. And like, I'll have to send you the picture. It's a funny picture, but like we were both like we both looked super young. But like seeing seeing him now and seeing him then, it's it's crazy how much he's, you know, just physically grown and developed. But he's a dog. Yeah, so we got, yeah he's he's a savage, and it's fun because you, you will <laughs> during duels will be like, hey hey hey, watch this. He's gonna he's gonna kick the kick the crap out of this. And the smile, man. He he's oh yeah, and he'll do it like smiling. Yeah, yeah. I feel like uh, every every duel meet you see that kid smiling. He's like he yeah. loves doing it. I think that's the oh, thing. Yeah, like he, yeah. he loves has pleasure in just kicking the snot out of guys. Um, but yeah, so we got DJ sixty five. Uh, um, you know, a, a bunch of solid guys at seventy four. Um, you know, eighty four. I don't really know what we're doing yet. Um, you know, and, and 97, assuming that I'm healthy. Um, and you know, we got Pete at heavyweight. Pete. Uh, so. Pistol Pete. <laughs> we heard yep. Trent, Trent talked to us about Pete and he said, Pete, Pete's going to be uh real good. Yeah. Yeah. Dudes. Well, I mean, he was in, I want to say the semis or quarters of, of Midlands last year, um, mm-hmm. before he got concussed. So, I mean, it was. He's good. He, He's his a good heavyweight. Really good, and just and he gets to train with Trent. Like Trent is a yeah. world class athlete. Yeah, like, like he gets to train with Trent every single day. Mm-hmm. You know, and then you know, hopefully, I get to train with Trent every single day. Um, you know, still going forward. Um, so I mean, it's going to be the upper weight room here is is, is real real solid. Back. Yeah, and especially as you know, we hopefully can we we can treat keep Trent. And and you know keep growing our, you know our, our our big guy room to, you know, with you know fill it with savages. Yeah, man, it's awesome to hear. It's awesome to hear that the yeah. the future for Wisconsin is bright and the future of your career. You know, have a little bump in the road this year. Get get your surgery. You know, in the in the next you know two weeks or so, and get back. You know, get healthy and. You know, we'll post some updates. I'll, I'll get Braxton. Uh, I'm sure me and him will talk a bunch while he's oh, put yeah. up put up in his apartment doing not a lot with the with his shoulder done so well, listen, i'll man, make sure we, we post some updates i'll do an in-person podcast whenever you guys whenever you guys get out here oh yeah, yeah we plan on it we, that would we be yeah. now that would be when we get the whole team in person yeah i mean listen I, so i'm i move out of here in i want to say may or june so you know i'll have my own place and we can all get together and and you know have one big happy Wisconsin. Have, yeah, uh, yeah. Have a good, yeah. We'll have a good time. We'll have a good time, man. Yeah. So we already, you know, you, you came on not so long ago, so we're going to skip the zombie apocalypse question. I'm sure the teammate, the team hasn't changed. I think it was probably you, Trent Hamity and somebody else. I'm sure maybe Gomez or somebody probably like, Joe. Yeah. Probably, yeah, yeah, I think, it, yeah. Joe and, and DJ. Yeah. Yeah. Probably, uh, probably that. So. We'll, we'll, we'll win the zombie apocalypse. I don't know. Wyatt Hendrickson has four Air Force teammates, so yeah. Wyatt can join us, you know. I'll take. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, that's good. The, listen, uh, you know what? Let, let's just Wisconsin and then the three military academies. We'll we'll make a team. We'll be great. <laughs> the super yeah. team. That's super really, team. Yeah. And Team Heavyweight Nation could could join you guys, right? Oh and, yeah, you, yeah. You guys you're like the protector. You're, you're I, like, don't know, I might I might have to join with Cornell with the Apusian brothers. We're yeah, hearing bro, so much Cor- about. Yeah, we've been hearing about these Yapujan brothers from Cornell that apparently they're like, they're they're the hunting, the most crazy hunters that, you know, but I mean, these are also Cornell guys telling us that they're crazy hunters, not so, like Wisconsin guys telling us they're crazy but, hunters. So they're from Colorado. The, and like, I, from what I understand, they're from like the mountains of Colorado. Yeah, they are. So they, are. they probably are. Well equipped. Granite. Cornell probably isn't a big hunting society. <laughs> no, that's what I said. I was like thinking, I'm like, yeah, Vito said that. And I was like, well, Vito's from New York, from yeah. uh, like uh, 
like a, a non like fully American household. Like I don't know how big hunting was for Vogar. I don't know if Vogar is hunting much, but um I, I was like, I don't know. It's it's the Yapusha brothers, know. they're also from the mountains of Colorado though. So yeah. yeah. They might be good for us to have. They're definitely from Colorado. I think they're from the mountains. Yeah. Wait, Matt, let's do something fun. Let's each pick our team. From all the guests that we've had on the podcast, oh, Matt, I want God. you to make a team. I already have mine. Uh, that's a that's an interesting one. I got mine already. I'm done already. Uh, I'll you go got, first. You go first. Starting up at their lineup. Now, how we're going to get food, couldn't tell you. But I'm going all big. I'm going Braxton, Trent. Actually, wait, hold on. I mean, hold on. Let me think about this for a second. I'm going to go Braxton, Kekheisen, Lu- um. Hendrickson, I think. I think I'm gonna go Braxton and Kekheisen Hendrickson. Sorry, Trent. I, I got to, man. Parker Parker Kekheisen is he's he's my boy. He's he's my dude. Uh and if I was able to get a fourth, I'd pick Lucas Bird because we'd sacrifice him if we had to. Love Lucas right. to death, but like that would feed oh, us for at least a couple days. <laughs> All right, I'm I think oh, I'm gonna go. Up. All right, go ahead. What's your team? I think I'm gonna go Vito. Because uh-huh. he's just lightning fast. Okay, that's valid. Yeah. I mean, I feel like he could he could help out. Um, he I'm gonna go Braxton. Gathering. Okay. Because we're gonna need a savage. Ah, uh, do I go big or small? You well, you. I mean, your team is. I mean, you got Braxton, but like, are we talking like fixed shoulder Braxton or injured Braxton? Hey, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Either way, I can work. I am back to at least normal person status right All right, now. valid. Okay, okay. I can you got one more. You could go little or you could go big here because we've had a couple heavyweights and we've had a couple like lightweights if you wanted to go, like I said, Bird or Glory or anything like that. You know, I think I'm going to have to go big. But how big do I want to go? You got to go big if you're going to go big. You you know right. which big man you got to take. The I'm one that Wyatt. knows how to shoot a gun, yeah. I'm going wide. I mean, Tram probably does too, but – Wyatt's also a third year in the Air Force Academy, so it's kind of hard to bet against Wyatt. Yeah, yeah. I Wyatt's probably – if I had to pick outside of the Wisconsin team, Wyatt's probably going to pick him. Yeah, he's the they, number one draft. Yeah. Definitely, man. Number one draft pick in the zombie apocalypse. All right, man. It's been a pleasure to have you on, Braxton. We will uh, – you know, talk to you. Matt, what is going on with your mic? It's not me. I'm muted. No, you're good. No, stay on mute. Stay unmuted. When what? you mute your when you mute your when you mute yourself on the computer, like when you mute yourself, your your AirPod doesn't pick up the thing, but your camera microphone does. Oh, uh, okay. So stay unmuted, please. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, Braxton, like I said, it's a pleasure. Pleasure to have you on. You know, it's always good. Can't wait to catch up again. You know, hopefully this summer, hopefully this summer we'll, you'll be seeing me with a nice camera recording Braxton Amos just like this, just up in, up in his grill. Uh, and Braxton's going to show us around Wisconsin, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, you guys are more than welcome to come on up. You know, Trent and I should be, you know. Yeah, Trent Trent said his, his lease is good until August, so. Yeah, yeah, you know. I, and hopefully, I he, I, he said he hopes he stays, but it's not. You know, it's kind of day by day where what he's doing. Yeah. You know, hopefully, man, I hope he stays. Um, but yeah, yeah, you know, it, you guys are more more than welcome to you know come up and yeah, and we gotta get well, you gotta get one of these concrete mixers and you gotta show us uh, a Culver's. We've never been to a Culver's before, so, so I've wanna... only been to Culver's once. Yeah, well, we'll have the experience together then. Yeah, we can we can. We can go to Culver's. Yeah, together. go to Culver's. Go to this diner that apparently is crazy good. Oh, by he's, across he's from Trent's house. Yeah, yeah, across he's from where you guys, uh, you know, Trent's house. But yeah, Thank man, you. it's awesome catching up. It's been another episode of the Heavyweight Nation podcast. We'll see you guys later.